China and Hungary are deepening ties during a visit to the Central European country by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Xi and Hungarian Prime Minister Viktor Orban signed multiple new agreements yesterday meant to bring the two nations closer together. Orban praised the, quote, uninterrupted friendship, end quote, between the countries. This is Xi's final stop on a five-day European tour that also took him to Serbia and France. Let's bring in CBS News contributor Isaac Stonefish. He's also the founder and CEO of Strategy Risks, a research firm focused on China. Um, Isaac, thanks so much for being here. A, a lot to talk about. And I wonder if you could just start off with sort of the basics here. How closely is Hungary, how closely are Hungary and China sort of tied together economically and, and culturally even? Culturally, very little. Yeah. Economically and politically, fairly close because both take a lot of pleasure and political advantage in being against mainstream Europe and mainstream American views. Both are broadly supportive of Putin's invasion of Ukraine and both like a world order not led by the United States. So it's a mutually beneficial relationship on that front, geopolitically. So how did she work to strengthen China's influence in Europe during this trip? He had a lot of sweetheart deals that he signed with Serbian and Hungarian leaders. He made the right noises about what those countries were doing, and he gave a lot of face to those leaders by going and visiting and by, when you think about it, so many countries he could visit in Europe. He spent a little bit of time in France, but then mostly it was two countries that are used to being on the periphery. So, you know, when you look at sort of the geopolitical landscape, though, um, is there sort of a track record to look at if, you know, China makes a promise to uh, invest economically? Um, what does that track record look like? Do they have the history of coming through with those economic promises? That's a great point. A lot of times you'll see really big numbers. So China has signed a multi-billion dollar deal with this country or that country, and then you'll actually audit the numbers and you'll find oh, well, this money didn't really go to where it was intended, or the investment vehicle only spent 5 or 10% of what they were saying. So it's a good note of caution as we see big headlines coming out, realizing a lot of times the money's not actually going to go through. So what's the larger strategy then for China in doing that and making these very sort of grandiose public kind of displays of economic commitments to countries like Hungary? People forget. People see the headline number and they don't actually go through and look and say, ah, okay, well, this deal, it didn't actually go through. And so it's a good, people remember the big headline numbers. They don't follow through with what happens after. Interesting. So ultimately then, Isaac, where does this leave the U.S.? I mean, what does Xi's visit mean for the U.S.'s influence on that continent? I think it was positive because Xi's visit got a lot of criticism, not only for the human rights abuses that the Communist Party represents, but also because Europe is very worried about Russia and Beijing is very supportive. And no matter how Xi tries to portray Beijing's stance with Moscow, people see the facts on the ground, they see Beijing's unwillingness to condemn the war, and they realize, ah, if this gets worse, China is going to be more of a problem for Europe than it has been in the past. It is part of sort of the, um, you know, the, the idea, though, for China, from China's perspective, that ultimately the economic investment, or at least the headline of the economic investment, will sort of trump all. And that is enough to kind of get public sentiment, even in the short term, on their side. That's what Beijing hopes. Beijing also wants to indicate to London, to Germany, and to the United States that it has a lot of influence in the other parts of mm -hmm. Europe and that it's watching and that the U.S. has to actively go and try to counter this. Interesting. And so it's a, it's a long and very complicated right. game. About positioning on the geopolitical stage. All yes. right. Isaac Stonefish, really great to see you. Thanks so Thank much, you. Isaac.